It was her fifth year of marriage when she was nearly 17 that Anthony got her wool smolding. That day, Gurudeva was really angry. Ratani was in the kitchen preparing the midday food. When he rushed in, Hey! he called. What about me food? He jammed his hands against his waist, pressed his teeth onto lower lip, and waited ominously for answer. Ratani grew pale. She sensed trouble. She had not finished cooking the midday food. Come on, I wait in, thundered Gurudeva. Long spoon in hand, Ratani turned from the pot and faced him, trembling in every limb. She said, I, I was washing clothes today. There was plenty to wash. I will give you food just now. Two minutes. The barrett finish. The doll finish. The baji cooking. Baji? What baji? Rod Brudiva. Pumpkin vine, wild saltfish. Pumpkin vine? Who tell you to cook pumpkin vine? You always eat it, I thought. Answer back, eh? Spluttered Gurudeva. I will show you. And he pounced upon her, even as he had pounced once upon the puppy, and bundled her into the yard. Artfully, he intertwined her long hair around his fist and dragged her into a circle over the rough ground as though she were a sack of potatoes and when she neither wailed nor wept he disengaged his hand from her hair and cuffed her and kicked her frantically his large taut neck grew totter and his face Darker. He foamed at the mouth. He was terrifying. You want to cry, eh? You play it taking blows? Well, take blows. And he chopped her off and undid his harness leather belt and flung her and flung her with it until the belt became too short for further use. And she, instead of howling with mortal pain, she suddenly laughed out long and loud like a, like a creature gone stark mad. And in that hard, mad gladness, she laughed out. Beat me today, kill me and bury me. And he was suddenly alarmed at her frenzy. And not letting her know he was alarmed, he left her. In a heap, there she sprawled on the ground, in it as though dead. And there it was, Mira and Dira, her elder sister-in-law, found her when they returned from the rice land, drenched and dripping, two hours later. Trembling with the cold as much as she, as much as because of what had been done to Ratni. They stopped either side of her and held her under the armpits and helped her to get to her feet. Groaning and sagging, Ratni stood up and leaned against their shoulders, allowed herself to be carried and put upon her kata, the bed of hemp and string, in the little room of the house, which was hers and Rajadeva's. 
Then, still in their wet clothes, Mira and Dira went to the truck and led to the saffron patch in the cane field. They bought saffron. Mira set to grinding and saffron into paste with coconut oil in a stone slab using the grind masala while Dira torn up into strips and all orani for bandage. For bandage. Then together they laid the a saffron piece upon the body of Ratini. On all the parts of her body that were black and blue and bruised with kicking and coughing and belting of Gurudeva. And at the pigeons, sorrow assailed Mira and Dira as they ministered unto the hapless Ratni. And they wept till the tears flood their eyes too much, and they quickly brushed them away so as to see where and how to apply the healing piece. And thus they felt, because they had known that such was their lot as well, and they wandered in Bogage, resigned sort of a way why the Delti had allowed them to be born at all, for they had never heard it taught by their fathers, by the elders of the village, as well as the pundits who often read the Ramana on evenings, that the husband was to the wife, lord and master, all in one, and that the woman's highest virtue lay in her absolute submission to her husband's will. Be that will of whatever complication, But, you see, Dara told Maria in Hindi, it's all very one-sided operation. They want us to be like Sita, that is, to try as far as possible to be like her. On the other hand, they are far from being like Rama an incarnation of great God Vishnu himself and they do not even try it is not fair but wipe your tears little sister it's our karma